Good day, subscribers. Today is Semester 5, Episode 1, Thoughts on the Program. If you'd like to see the previous episode before watching this one, click the banner in the upper right-hand corner. In the last episode, we looked at CS6476 Computer Vision Final Review. I went over my thoughts on the class, all of the different assignments and the final project as well as the exam in that class, and then lastly the pros and cons and would I take it again. As always, I'd love to thank my subscribers for watching these videos, for commenting, and for making this whole process fun. You guys are the ones that inspire the video, so if you ever have any video requests, make sure you drop one in the comment and I'll try to get to it. This episode's comic is about the different type of programming and the way each type sees each other. So in this episode, I kind of want to go over what I thought of the program. So usually when I do a review, I'll do a review of a class, and what I try to do is do a halfway review as well as a final review. And the halfway review, I kind of give my thoughts well in the class of how I feel the class is going, how I feel the information is going, um, how I feel the assignments are. And then in the final review, I try to give a full view of the class and what I thought of it overall. So in this, I want to do the same thing, but instead of for a class, I want to do it for the entire Georgia Tech OMSCS program. So right now I'm in my fifth class. I'm halfway, so I kind of want to do a halfway review of that. So before we jump into that, let's talk a little bit about the program. So what's involved in the program? The OMS CS program is made up of 10 courses, two fundamental courses, one specialization, which can be either computational perception and robotics, computer systems, interactive intelligence, or machine learning, and then elective courses for the rest of the program. I talk a little bit more about this in one of my previous videos that I'll link up here. If you want to see more about each of the specializations, you can go to that video. But overall, the program is made up of 10 classes, which include one specialization. So now we know a little bit about the program, but if you're thinking about getting into this program, what kind of time commitment should you be expecting? How long does the program take? Well, first we have to go through a couple of rules about the program. First, you have to complete two fundamental courses within your first year. And what is a fundamental course? A fundamental course is a course that is offered within the program, but not specific to your specialization. So for example, my specialization is machine learning. I don't have to take either computational photography or knowledge-based AI to get my specialization, but I took both of them within my first year as my fundamental courses to complete that action. Second, you're allowed one gap semester between courses. What that means is if you took a course in the spring, you could take the summer off, but then you would have to take a course in the fall. And third, you're allowed to take a maximum of two courses in the spring and the fall, but only a maximum of one course in the summer. So if we think about those three rules, the minimum amount of time that you would have to commit to this program if you wanted to complete it would be two years. And that would be if you took two courses in the spring, two courses in the fall, and then one course in the summer for two years. That way you would complete your 10 courses and you would be completed with the program. The maximum amount of time that the program could take would be six years and one third. So six years and one semester. And that is a large commitment. But that would be if you took one course each semester with a gap semester between each one. So you would take a course in the spring, take the summer off, take a course in the fall, take the spring off. So it would be a much lighter load, but that commitment of over six years is a large commitment. For me, the program is probably going to take somewhere between three to four years, so it's still a decent sized commitment. So that is definitely something to think about when you're looking into the program. Now we know a lot about the program, so let's move on to the focus of this video, me. So where am I in this program? So far, I've completed four classes and I'm taking my fifth class, which means I'm halfway. My first class I took was computational photography as my fundamental course, followed by knowledge-based AI, my second fundamental course. Those were both within my first year, so I completed that action. After that, I took machine learning for trading 
and computer vision, which are both specialization specific courses for my specialization, which is machine learning. And currently, I'm in software development process. And that is just an elective course. If we look on the right, we can see a couple of pictures from a few of my classes. The top right picture is a panorama that I made in the computational photography course. Below that, you have a couple of indicators that I used for my final project in machine learning for trading. And then on the left, you can see a homework assignment from computer vision where we had to recognize different signs, label them, and point out where they were in the picture. Between the four classes that I've completed, overall, I thought they were pretty great. Computational photography, which like I said, was my first class, I would say I liked it. It had some good information and it was a reasonably difficult course, but I was able to complete it. Knowledge-based AI and machine learning for trading I thought were fantastic courses. They were definitely manageable within time. You might even be able to do two of them at one time. And they were just really great information and really well taught. However, the last class I took, computer vision, I really was not a fan of. It's actually the only course that I've reviewed so far that I would say I wouldn't take again. If you'd like to see a full review of any of these courses, I have them all on my channel. So make sure to look at them if you're questioning about taking any of these courses. And for each one of these courses, what was the time commitment? Well, depending on the course, it's a little bit different. As I said, knowledge-based AI and machine learning for trading, I found to be much more manageable courses. So that was probably somewhere between five and 10 hours a week. Whereas computational photography and computer vision were a little bit more rigorous and I would probably put them somewhere between 15 hours a week, somewhere around there. So now I'm halfway through the program. And if you've been with us from the beginning, you know that my undergraduate is in mechanical engineering. Meaning when I started the program, I really didn't have a lot of knowledge on computer science, on programming. I had taught myself a little bit of Python, but I was definitely uh, more on the beginner side. So what have I learned going this far through the program? Well, I really feel like I've learned a lot and I really feel like I'm much more confident as a computer scientist and as a programmer. In computational photography, I learned about image manipulation, image processing, and about cameras. And if you look at the top pictures, that's actually my final project for the computational photography course, where I built a program that would remove smoke and haze from pictures and develop the picture shown on the right. In knowledge-based AI, I learned about how AI works and current changes that are going on in AI. And that was a really interesting course. It really taught me a lot about computer science rather than focusing more on the programming. There definitely was programming assignments in the course, but it was much more about getting a full understanding of what AI is. And then in machine learning for trading, I learned about stock trading indicators, working with limited data, and machine learning techniques. And you can see one of the graphs from my final project above, where you can see a manual strategy that I had designed against a learning strategy that I had designed using a Q-learning technique. In computer vision, I learned about video manipulation, image tracking, and CNN machine learning models. And you can see my final project for that class up at the top, where I designed a program that would find the address numbers in pictures and label them. In the examples above, the program I designed actually did pretty well. If I remember right, it had about a 90% accuracy when labeling numbers. And then lastly, in the class I'm taking currently, software development processes, I've learned about Java, Android Studios, and working in software teams. This class so far has been interesting because it's not just focused on the programming, it has a lot of focus on how the development of software is actually done in large scales. And for that class, you can see an example of one of the homeworks I had in that, where I designed an app to encode a message that you type in using a Caesar cipher. So lastly, to wrap this video up, what are the pros and cons that I've seen so far in the program? So on the pros side, there is a lot of good information. If you have an interest in computer science and you're kind of where I was, where you started maybe in a different major and you just wanted to learn about computer science as a whole, this program is great. Second, most classes are manageable within regular life, meaning work, friends, and whatever else you have going on. 
most courses are manageable within a decently rigorous schedule. For example, I'm able to take one course along with working a full-time job. And third, you're able to get into most courses that you want to get into. Now, this has kind of been a problem, at least it was for my undergrad, but for the OMSCS program, for the most part, if you want to get in a course, you'll probably get into it. Most of the time I have to waitlist myself and then wait until somebody drops off, but I really haven't had too much trouble getting into courses that I want to get into. Now on to the cons. And really so far in the program, I can only think of one, and that is it is a big time commitment, both for the classes and for the program as a whole. Like I said, the program can take anywhere between two years and six years and a semester. And for me, it's probably going to take between three and four years. And that's a big time commitment. Additionally, like I said, each course takes somewhere between 10 to 15 hours a week. So again, you're making a big time commitment. And that's just definitely something to think about before you just run into the program. So who is the program good for? Well, first of all, people who want to continue their education and get a master's degree from a great school for a very reasonable price. The OMSCS program for me is going to cost about $10,000, which when you compare it to other schools, which come out to usually about $40,000, is very reasonable. And second, it's great for people who don't have a ton of experience with computer science or software and want to gain that experience. Personally, the thing that I feel like I've learned the most from this program isn't how to code, but it's how to think like a computer scientist. Just the same as when I went through engineering school, I learned a ton about math and I learned a ton about science, but I learned how to break down a problem. That's what I feel like I've gained the most from this program. How do you break down a software problem into parts that then become manageable and you can actually write out the programming for to solve the problem? And lastly, would I take it again? In other words, if I was able to start the program over, would I still go through the program? And so far, I would say yes. I really have learned a lot. There definitely are other options for people who have a different goal. So for example, if your goal is to just work on machine learning programs, you can take a boot camp that'll teach you a ton about machine learning, and within a couple of months, you'll be able to get a job as a machine learning programmer. However, if you want to learn about computer science as a whole, if you want to get an education from a really great school like Georgia Tech, this program is a great option. As I said, it's very reasonably priced, it is something that you can do while working, and you learn a lot. So, so far, I would say yes, I would take it again. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. And if you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section. And make sure to keep an eye out for videos coming up in the future. Thanks, and subscribe.